Horse nettle. Horse nettle, nettle is another one in the uh, nightshade family. Uh, horse nettle is one that is a very common uh, perennial weed in our pastures. It's usually uh, no, no taller than about a foot and a half tall. Uh, very thorny, the nettle part uh, giving that as, away as a clue. The, uh, the real distinctive characteristic, of course, are these flowers and also the, uh, the fruit that it bears. It looks like a very small uh, green tomato and it'll turn yellow as it, uh, as it ripens. Uh, this would be found throughout the south, uh, very, very common in pastures. We see this all of the time. Most of the time, the animals will ignore it. They're not uh, going to be going after it except for when there's a uh, real problem with, um, you know, having a, a shortage of forage supply out there. Toxicity-wise, again, we're dealing with uh, uh, solanine and the related alkaloids to that. Uh, all plant parts are toxic in this case, but the uh, toxins are very concentrated in the berries and even more toxic in this particular case uh, when they mature as compared to the ground cherry where it uh, goes away when it matures. In this particular case, it's even more toxic when it matures. Uh, pretty much all animals are going to be affected by this one as well. Uh, the signs in this case, again, weakness, excessive salivation, progressive paralysis, uh, acute hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, and then collapse and death. This is a, uh, another very quickly acting uh, problem as well. And just like uh, with uh, the ground cherry, uh, tannic acid, charcoal, evacuation of the stomach would be helpful here, protectants uh, as well. Now, anything else in this uh, uh, nightshade family um, uh, will have an issue. This is black nightshade in with some soybeans in this particular picture, and you can see the fruit in this particular case are dark black, um, and those are also uh, poisonous uh, with the same basic compounds. Many others in that same nightshade family and some that you might recognize, uh, in addition to nightshade and climbing nightshade, we have uh, potatoes, tobacco, tomatoes, uh, Jerusalem cherry, as well as the ground cherry that we were talking about earlier are all in that uh, same family. Jimson weed. Jimson weed is another very, very common weed that we see around. Uh, it's a very coarse and very foul-smelling annual. When you're around jimson weed, you will know what I'm talking about. It has a very uh, malodorous uh, aroma to it and uh, very distinctive uh, looking uh, uh, plant as well as the, especially the capsule here that is very spiny where it holds the, uh, the seeds, the black uh, shiny seeds down inside of that. This is very abundant throughout the south very abundant in uh, very fertile fields, in particular in gardens or in uh, barn lots. This is oftentimes going to be growing in barn lots. The toxicity of this particular one is uh, uh, a suite of different types of alkaloids. Uh, very, uh, um, a very large number of these actually are, are uh, problematic. Uh, the tropane alkaloids in, these, in this particular case are uh, quite toxic. And again, all of the uh, plant parts in this particular one is, is also uh, poisonous, whether green or dry. And the seeds are particularly poisonous, and that's oftentimes uh, uh, what the consumption is, is actually the seed, either by accident uh, or, or what have you. Typically, uh, all livestock are going to be susceptible to this, but cattle and swine seem to be uh, most commonly affected, mainly because of uh, the, their propensity to ingest the, the seed. The signs uh, for this particular one, very weak and rapid pulse and heartbeat, uh, dilated pupils, uh, incoordination, convulsions, they go comatose and then ultimately will, will die. There's really no specific treatment for this particular one. There's, uh, there's really not a whole lot that can be done in this particular case. They can give it uh, cardiac or respiratory stimulants uh, to prevent them going into the coma. Um, the coma, once they get down into coma, it's very difficult to get them back, uh, back out of that. Okay, Johnson grass. Johnson grass is another one that uh, uh, is a very common weed in our pastures, in our hay fields. Uh, this one is uh, coarse perennial grass, about eight feet tall, up to eight feet tall anyway. Uh, very long leaves, relatively narrow uh, leaves, and the characteristic uh, panicle uh, that it produces as well. 
going to be in many fields, uh, west, uh, waste areas, uh, fence rows, uh, storage areas for hay bales and that sort of thing, very common in those areas. Now, uh, ordinarily it's fine. It's, uh, it's one that actually has been used as a forage crop in the past and the animals can graze it or, or consume it in hay and it's not an issue, but it also contains a cyanogenic compound. In this particular case, we're talking about a glycoside uh, named Durin. And Durin is actually one uh, that uh, can, can uh, uh, in that same way of uh, talking about the black cherry, uh, when it begins to wilt, when it becomes stressed, uh, particularly if the leaves become damaged in any way by frost or drought, uh, that, uh, that compound is exposed to the enzymes. And, and this is really a defense mechanism for the plant. It keeps that, that plant from being consumed by particularly uh, uh, leaf hoppers and other kinds of uh, uh, insects that uh, would oftentimes uh, attack those kinds of plants. But unfortunately, uh, our ruminant animals tend to uh, consume this quite, a, quite a readily, and this is usually where we have our problem with it. Horses and other uh, single stomach animals can also be affected, but not quite to the degree to which uh, the ruminants are affected. Difficult breathing, uh, staggering, collapse, convulsions uh, immediately before death, and again, one that's very quickly uh, fast acting. Within 15 or 30 minutes after consuming, uh, the animals will start showing signs, and usually within an hour, they'll, they'll be down or die. The, uh, in this case, again, going back to uh, just the, like we talked about with the uh, black cherry, the mucous membranes in the blood will be very bright red in color. It's that cyanogenic compounds that are causing those issues. The treatment, uh, intravenous injection of sodium nitrite, as I mentioned before, make sure that it's, uh, uh, that you've ruled out nitrate poisoning. Uh, otherwise, you would need to use methylene blue and then repeat those uh, applications as need be until the animal is uh, showing no, more, no further signs. There are many things in the sorghum family that also share these same characteristics. Even our forage crops like forage sorghum can have this issue, especially at this time of the year when we begin to uh, have freezes, uh, we can begin to have issues with this. Now fortunately, this is a volatile compound, so it doesn't last for very long. And oftentimes, once the uh, frost or damage has occurred within just a matter of a couple weeks, that, uh, that compound has dissipated very dramatically and is not uh, a toxin anymore. So uh, we can still use these afterwards, but we do need to uh, give it a little bit of time for that to volatilize. 